Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing another cost analysis of my Factory 533 Hot Rod version 2. I'm about three quarters of the way through the project, but monetarily, I'm pretty much 90% done. Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel about kit cars and other car topics. If you like what you see, Please subscribe and hit the notification buttons below and share with others on social media. So I've been giving, you know, cost analysis uh, multiple times throughout this journey, a lot in the beginning, mainly before I bought the car. Um, and now I'm three quarters of the way through doing the car, or at least it seems like it. We'll see about that. But I've purchased almost everything. There's probably only $500 left of nuances to buy. And then the only last thing to buy is the final paint and whether I'm also paying for somebody to help me with that. So that's the only last thing that's not really on this cost analysis. But all my parts, major parts, things that I want to implement, all the painting for the small parts, uh, A-frames, things like that, undercoatings, uh, lizard skin, all that stuff has actually been paid for and been used. So let's hop over to the Excel sheet and take a look and I'll show you kind of what's going on with the build. All right, so let me show you what's going on here. We have a final total, which is a total of all these different segments uh, of what the car is costing. Then I have an area of what do I still need to buy? And as you could see, I was saying that I'm like 90% done paying for the car. There's literally only a few hundred dollars worth of stuff that I might or might not buy for the car. It just depends when we get there. And that's another good thing to keep in mind is you don't want to really buy too much stuff in advance because you might buy it in advance and then find out you don't need it later or you go in a different direction and now you're sitting with all the stuff that you have to sell uh, because it's too late to return. It's 90 days later or whatever. Um, and then this is the official still to get, which also includes $5,000 worth of paint and body work. I'm assuming it's going to be at least two grand in supplies for paint and stuff like that. I'm throwing three grand in for labor. Um, this is based off of still a DIY situation. Uh, this car would definitely cost around $15,000 if I just said, here you go, drop it off and let someone do it. Um, so is the 5,000 kind of a random number? It kind of is and it kind of isn't. I've put a lot of thought into it. I've also said, this is what I'm willing to pay. You know, I'm not paying more than that. However, I don't want to throw it away at the last second on the pay job because we all know when it comes to show cars, that's the most important thing, period, is the paint job. So without that body work included, we're looking at 378. That's, that's really small, just a few nuances to get. And again, waiting to figure it out as I go. So since it's been a really long time since I've done the analysis, I'm going to go through this again. The original car was uh, $20,000. Uh, the transportation, I'm in Arizona, which is way the hell away from where they're at. And so this is actually a great deal. I think it was normally like $2,200. And for whatever reason, I, I worked my magic and got a little off. Um, originally in my first quote analysis, I said that I was going to powder coat the car uh, a different color. But as I kind of figured out that most of this thing's going to be all covered up, what's the point? Just keep it black have it powder coated, come straight from the factory, be done with it. So I ended up doing that. Um, I already bought the manifolds for my engine. And when you buy this kit for the uh, LS engine stall, uh, they give you a few things. So they actually subtracted a few dollars. This would normally be, you know, four, four thirty-five or whatever, but I already had them. So uh, that was deleted. Um, once you specify the engine, to them they'll just send you out a drive drive shaft and there's no cost for that uh, i did upgrade to the leather bench seat uh, so there's 649 for that uh, four link there's no charge for that because that's the uh, base minimum of the car uh, the extra hood and engine side covers that cost some money there i was going to go with a whole different gauge set and set up but i kind of just backed off of that because i know that the whole dash is like curvy and I was going to try to have this flame thing kind of happening and it wouldn't bend to the dash right and so I just kept the gauges simple uh, the gauges look great the ones that come with the car so I have no issues with that so I just went with the, 
kind of a stock thing that that looks good now a big one that i needed to have was the uh, rear exit exhaust so i have a sensitive hearing <laughs> and my friend greg he has like an 800 horsepower engine with raw pipes coming out the front shooting straight up at the door windows and uh, I took a ride in that once and blew my head away. And so I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not doing anything like that. So, uh, you know, the side exhaust is definitely still behind you, but I wanted to go way behind me. So I went with the exit exhaust. Plus it looks cool in the back. I kind of like that better than coming out of the sides. Uh, I went for the heat sound insulation kit because I'm in Arizona. I just wanted to get as, as much heat out of the car, keep it out of the car. So, and it's pre-cut to your car, so what the hell, might as well do it. Uh, I decided to go with a chrome-plated steering wheel. The only reason I did that is one less thing for me to paint. So I figured it's, it's worth the extra 150 or whatever it was to go to that. So I just did that. Uh, electric power steering. This, as far as I'm concerned, is a must. Like, having the car without it, that would be really tough. I have shoulder and neck issues, so I have to have it no matter what, but uh, that's just a bonus. Now, when I put this in, I specified the right uh, oil pan and everything to know that this thing was going to perfectly fit without any kind of modifications or clocking or any of that stuff. And so I was getting these comments on my videos. Oh, you're, you're doing this all wrong. You're doing this in the wrong order. You're doing this, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? I didn't. <laughs> so... Uh, you know that was very very well researched out so um but definitely worth the money so efi fuel system that's a total add-on that i added knowing that i was doing a full uh, efi system and you know in the future i'm probably going to do somebody requested a uh and and fitting kind of guide if you will video um so when i did my efi fuel system it came a certain way and I wanted to use all the stuff possible from it. And that ended up having a lot of a &N fittings to make it all work. Um, and that's just because I'm using an LS engine and not just like, you know, regular Windsor engine or something like that. You know, it's a little crazy what I had to do with all the a &N fittings, but I'll go into that a little bit later in another video. Uh, heater defrost kit, again, great thing to have. However, I've talked before that, uh, it's so evasive in the car, taking up all your dash space, taking up all your firewall, all that stuff that if you don't need it, don't put it in. If you do need it, put it in, but know the consequences of doing it. I'm in Arizona. It's either super hot, super cold, and you got like three weeks of perfectness. I have to have it. So uh, just is what it is. But if you're looking for a nice show car like firewall where there's not a lot going into it, you ain't gonna get that with this because you got the dryer and all these other things you gotta bolt on. So, uh, fender kit, $8.99. I added in the floor mats. Uh, there were some special door handles that I originally had specced, and I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do any of that. So, I got rid of that. Uh, now, I went with the stock rear brakes, which I believe is off of a Thunderbird. I thought originally it was a Mustang, but I guess it's a Thunderbird. And, uh, and the stock front brakes actually come with uh willwood so you're solid there and i know that the fronts do most of the work so i'm not too worried about the back especially being a street machine uh, i think it's just kind of a waste of money to go with those uh, rear brakes however if i was racing or something that'd be a totally different story uh, and that's the one thing i like about these cars is you get to customize it to the way you want and i do notice on the forums there's a lot of people that Use fear to go, oh, you gotta go, you gotta buy the extra Windsor. You gotta buy this, you gotta buy that. Oh, you you can't do four link. Oh, I can't. Every freaking car on the road for the last hundred years is four link. Why do I have to go to a three link? Now, if I'm racing, that's one thing, but most of these people aren't racing. They're just being scared into like all these upgrades. You know, if if I could race a Mustang on the street that's all four link, then why do I have to upgrade to a three link? Now, people probably give me crap for that statement, but that's the fear, right? That's the fear. So, you know, if you're autocrossing or something, absolutely, get a three-link. But if you're not, who cares? Uh, save your money. So I got the Mozart. Now, now the thing with the Moser is 
I did that because I kind of wanted a turnkey situation. I didn't want to source something. I didn't want to rebuild something. I just wanted it to show up and know it was going to fit. It didn't work out perfectly like that because the upper control arms had to be modified. Uh, but I'm, I'm still happy with that decision. It was a good thing. Um, I ordered an extra brake reservoir, so I had one for the front and one for the back. That is an option. That's not something that uh, comes stock. Uh, the hardtop package I added on. Also all the power windows and stuff like that. And for me, I actually got a few discounts. So if you go to the build school, you get some sort of discount. Could be 500, 200, whatever it is. Mine was 250. Uh, but I also bought this car during a massive sale. And so I got the powder coating thrown in for free. So I threw that after the fact instead of taking it off here. And I also got, uh, I deleted the window because I'm not going to be taking the hardtop off and going to a Roadster and then back to the hardtop. So I deleted the windshield. And I also got a discount there. So, you know, if you add this all up, it's basically about 4000 a little over $4,000. So add that back into the total here uh, if you don't buy this on sale what that might be or if you don't go to the build school. Uh, so we actually save some money right there. Now when it comes to the engine, you know, I took a LQ4 Silverado engine, uh, 6.0 liter, ended up being about 6.2 liters because it was already 30 over. And I took that and I redid the whole thing. And so I'm not gonna go through every process of that because I've already done that in another video. However, all these things you see that are in color here are things that were never accounted for before. So for instance, I was originally gonna go with the uh, stock CPU, PCM, whatever you wanna call it, and I ended up not doing that. So I got rid of the computer, sold that, um, got rid of the harness. I had a PSI harness, which is amazing, but only worked with that computer. So since I sold that, I had to get that back. Um, and ended up going with a Terminator X Max that from Holly that would control the engine and the transmission all in one. So that was $14.99. So that was added to my total. These things in blue, uh, I haven't ordered yet because I don't know if I need them or not. And so you see like little question marks. Not sure yet. And when you start looking at like, you know, the engine wiring kit and all that stuff, there's tons of connectors and tons of things. And this goes to this sensor and that goes to the sensor. And I'm sitting there going, well, do I have the sensor? Do I need to buy this sensor? I don't know. I'm not there yet. And so that's what these things are, is like little reminders of, of what's coming down the pike, possibly. Um, I finally got my remote coils. Um, so I got some, you know, AC Delco st stock um, coils. And then they're in a TSP uh, remote hanger, if you will. So it's a nice little chunk. And then I finally got some blue tailor cables, which is going to go great with the blue car. And a special crimp to actually, you know, custom make the length since it's remote. Uh, so these are all added in here now as new totals. Uh, a and fittings. I ended up spending about $200 in a and fittings. That's a lot of money, uh, which I did not expect. Um, and I haven't bought an air filter or the air intake tube because I really don't know how much room I have. I've been talking to different people. I've been trying silicone things and all that. I have a four inch 95 millimeter uh, throttle body. And the last thing I want to do is like squeeze that down to three inch. So I'm trying to find four inch tubes that will do all this stuff. That's not $400. Like it's a piece of silicone. Like literally it's a $20 part, you know. Um, so I don't mind paying 50 bucks for it, you know but uh, I'm not paying $300 for it. So we'll see what happens when I come to that. But I also need the drive system fully on. I need the hood on so I know where this thing's going and, and how it's gonna be. So that's coming down the pike later. Uh, I ended up getting a Roadrunner converter with the 32 to 3500 stall. Um, so that's something that I'm getting ready to install soon. And then I have all my low car dipsticks, the uh, actual shifter, um, you know, the trans and oil dipstick. And then we got the Eddy Motorsport system. Um, and so that's my drive system. That's all blinged out, really cool. Uh, and then I had to buy a 4L60 flex plate. Now I assumed I had a 4L60 flex plate on the engine, but as I researched my VIN number and found out that what was married to this originally is a 4L80. 
And so I had to buy another flex plate and hopefully soon I'm going to find that all this stuff matches and it's the right length and everything bolts up correctly. Not sure. Um, I also changed out the battery holder because Eddie Motorsports just so happened to have a nicer blue anodized uh, battery holder. And so I had to find the correct battery that would fit that holder and I just did recently and it's going to be somewhere in this range. So I haven't bought that yet, but that's coming down the pike. So, you know, I already have all these things kind of included of what I'm going to be buying in the future. And so, you know, all the engine parts and all the components and AN fittings and the headers and everything that added on, on the outside ended up being around 15 grand. And again, that's show car-ish, bling, full awesome drive system, you know, uh, aftermarket uh, valve covers, mid-rise intake, all brand new coils, fuel injection, the whole shot. Uh, so at the end of the day, that's that's not horrible. That includes the transmission too, which was definitely thousands of dollars there. So so then when we go into body prep, uh, lizard skin was paid for. That actually ended up being a pretty decent amount of money. Um, I bought extra because I figured I was going to be doing maybe the inside of the uh, uh, hard top panels and things like that. Not sure if that's going to happen, but uh, uh, I just did a bunch of that spraying, as you just saw, and went through most of my products. So I think I have a little bit left to do some things. And then, uh, you know, here's my DIY paint job. So I'm putting 3000 down here. I'm putting 5000 down because I'd rather be above my estimate than not. And I know it's going to be at least $2,000 in product. And so we will see where it actually goes when it comes to labor. Um, leather shop. So this is something that I haven't actually put in here yet. I know that I need to do my center console. My uh, bench seat is already leather. However, do I want to bling it out? Do I want to put some diamond crosses in there? Do I want to redo the door uh, side panels, if you will? And I'm getting to the point where that answer is yes. So for a thousand bucks, can I get a few extra diamond stitches into my seat, redo the side panels, and just put some leather and a pop out or something on my center console so it looks really cool and totally tricks it out? Maybe. Not sure. Uh, am I going to pay three grand to have the whole car done? Absolutely not. I don't think it's worth it, honestly. Um, because there's such little inside this car. It's a small car. If I was redoing a 1967 Cadillac DeVille or something like that, yeah, <laughs> I would expect to pay three, five grand in leather because uh, you got all these boat seats and stuff that you got to deal with. But uh, anyways, so the big thing that I want to show you is these two things. Now, a lot of people have commented on my other cost videos. Oh, it doesn't cost that much. It doesn't. Oh, it's not a big deal. You know, oh, your, your estimates are way over the top. It's like, no, they're not. And let me show you. So all the suspension parts, paint supplies for that ended up being around $1,700. Now, I'm not saying that it was just for the suspension. In other words, oh, I could powder coat them for $600 and it cost me $1,700 to paint. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that. Everything that I painted on the car, a few cans of this, a few cans of that, some of this, some of that, sandpaper, tape, all the things you don't think about when you go to the store and buy something for five bucks, I tallied all that stuff. And if you have this stuff laying around your garage, that's great. And I have a lot of stuff laying around my garage, but this is the stuff where you get nickel and dime and people don't you know, add that into the total. Well, I did add it to the total and I was pretty shocked at what the numbers were. And then parts and fasteners. So this could be a tube of glue. This could be a bolt, you know, that $5 run down to Ace Hardware to get a certain bolt or whatever. You know, I'm putting all these special actuators. I changed up how my fenders are going to be actual bolt onto the car, things like that. At the end of the day, I have $1,200 basically in parts. Now, let me show you that. All right, so let's start with the paint area. Now, I'm just seeing something here. We got a lizard skin kit in there. I've already uh, put the lizard skin in the other list explicitly, so I'm just going to zero that out. That dropped us down to 1400 Makes me feel better, actually. But we got a few cans of paint. We got satin. 
We got a new Devilbus spray gun, which I had to buy. It's actually, I got a primer gun and a spray gun. Uh, tack rags, dry guide, which I haven't even used yet because I'm not officially doing the body work yet, except for cutting stuff. Uh, Duple color blue. Ended up not using that because it's the wrong color. Can't return it. Um, respirators. Got to have your respirator uh, filters. Uh, ref, red scuff pads, goggles, I mean, you name it, it's in here. Oil separator fittings, sanding blocks, uh, all your angle iron masking tape. Uh, it's all here. Mix cups, spatula for you doing your lizard skin stuff, um, Durablock, everything is here. So... And I've already spent about $200 in uh, actual blue color paint already. 100 here and 100 originally. That was to do my brake calipers in blue and then all the undercutting in blue. So as you can see, $1,400. That's better than $1,700. And then tools. I needed a tube bender for my brakes. I needed the official drill bits for uh, drilling all the uh, where the rivets are going to be in the car. I ended up putting the swamp cooler in this list because I would have never bought the swamp cooler if I wasn't doing this project in the garage. Garage. Uh, there's no way, like if I was woodworking or something, I'd be pumping in humidity into that garage while woodworking. Um, special knee pad pants. So anytime I hop on the ground, I already have knee pads on my knees. I thought that was a great thing. Uh, consider that part of my health, part of the tools, just like having a respirator. So I put that in there. Tap and die sets. Uh, you know. All sorts of different things. Uh, floor jack for the car, special low profile floor jack because a regular one's not going to work on this car. Harmonic balancer remover. So tools, about 500 bucks. Uh, master cylinder elbow. Uh, you saw me blew one of those in the first videos that I did working on the car. I screwed one up. Uh, you know, all your Sharpies, brake lines, things like that, that you had to add in. Um, I just started dealing with my center console, so I'm looking at the Bosch relays, things like that. Uh, liquids, oils, stuff like that. You got your marine grease, your clean wipes, your hand cleaners, your friction modifier, and your Lucas gear oil for the differential. That's all adding up to 50 bucks. And then fasteners, your Clecos, washers, foam, tape, you know, different things like that. Um, it just adds up. And so... So let's go over here, pop in our new tally, 1403, since we already had some lizard skin in there. And let's go to the top. So we're still looking at 56591. That includes the money I haven't spent yet. So that includes it. So let's say my body work comes in $2,000 cheaper, then I take 2,000 off this price. So in any case, the target total on this car so far is going to be around 55000 if you just round it out. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure working on this car. It's been great. Um, you know, can you build it stock? Make it real cheap. Make it a Roadster. Don't have all the extras, blah, 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 blah. And build it for thirty grand with an engine? Sure, you can. It's going to be pretty raw. It's going to be like driving on two by fours. So, you know, I don't know. You know, what I'll say is, is if I had to do it over, do I think I could come under on this number? Yes, because I have some of the tools now to do it. Uh, but if I built another car, would it be cheaper than this one? Probably not. I'd pro it'd probably be more expensive because now I'm going to do it this way or I'm going to do it that way. Uh, there's no reason for me to dumb this car down more than it is. Unless I went like just a roadster or something. So you lose the windows, you lose the hard top, you save yourself a few thousand dollars. Uh, but besides that, no, I think this is exactly where it's going to come in. Um, and let's see what my original total was. So you can see my initial total was somewhere around 61,000. However, you could see I got the Flame uh, digital dash kit I was telling you about, 700 bucks, uh, special sending unit. I got you know all these alarms and remotes and 
you know, cruise control, um, foot operated emergency brake, you know, all sorts of like stuff stuffed into this car. You know, I'm not putting a stereo, I'm not doing some of this crazy stuff, not doing the special digital dash lights. You know, when I got done with, you know, over time, I noticed that it's a vintage car. And if you put too much modern stuff in it, it just doesn't look right. So if I go buy, let's say, Mustang wheels with the cool, you know, split out Vs, Lamborghinis have those too, and you pop it on this car, it doesn't look as cool as some of the vintage, you know, hot rod wheels like I have now. In fact, when I originally saw my original hot rod wheels, I was like, eh, so, so passe, you know, typical, whatever you want to call it. And over time, I was looking for those special, you know, Mustang type wheels and stuff. And then I just, over time, it just like, what am I doing? It's like, it, none of it matches, you know? Um, so, you know, I'm glad I didn't go with all the crazy digital dash stuff and all that. And it's just simple, nice, vintage uh, looks, period. I could still make the paint look modern. I could still do some cool stuff to it to make it look modern, but not put in stuff that just doesn't work with it. So, well, I've babbled on enough on this one. Um, you know, 55,000, 56,000, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I'll do one more total probably at the very end once I have everything painted and everything so you guys know what the cost analysis is. Uh, but, you know, I'm right on target. In fact, I'm a little bit below target, which is great. And I've done a lot to this car and every nuance of this car is painted and every bolt is like, you know, painted black or done this or done that, um, you know, within reason. And so uh, I think I'm doing pretty good for, for exactly what I wanted to build. So until next time, have a great day.